Okay. Hi, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all so much for being here this evening. Uh, it is another strange weather day. Is it cool or is it hot? We don't know, but maybe eventually we'll get answers. So thank you again for being here with us tonight. Um, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Just if this is the first time you're joining us over Zoom, we just ask that everyone keep their microphones muted unless you're presenting or asking a question um, so we can avoid any feedback. And if you happen to forget to mute your microphone, I might take care of that for you. Um, again, just to make sure everyone is able to be heard during the meeting. If you do wanna ask a question though, or you have something you'd like to share, please feel free to jump in. You can use the hands raise feature as well. Um, and we will certainly make space for everyone to be able to speak. So moving right along, I'm going to turn the floor over to our treasurer, Dan, who will share with you our monthly treasurer's report. All yours, Dan. It does. Okay, I gotta remember how to share from not the thing I'm used to using. Where There it is, the big green button, got it. All right, um, sure. Okay, um, here's the balance sheet for end of uh, July, or sorry, August. Um, I think kind of as to be expected, the uh, our account kind of did increase quite a bit, uh, especially with our, our amount in the checking. Uh, that was due mostly to the um, income we gained for uh, the festival. Um, besides that, not much change with all the other accounts. They kind of stay the same. Um, <clears throat> for our income statement, um, overall, the big change from last month was, again, a lot of income here for the festival. And then kind of to coincide with that is we had quite a bit of expense for the, for the festival as well, um, between stuff for the tents, um, ice, beer, yada, yada, yada. All those things are kind of eating into the, the amount or into the, um, the income. But overall, um, we're sitting pretty good. We'll see how we're doing in six months as the expenses go out and hopefully income keep coming in. So and that's it. Uh, stop sharing. Okay. Back to you, Jess. Questions for Dan? Okay. All right, folks, we will move on then. Uh, next item, we'll talk about the festival recap. So uh, if you were able to join us for the festival, thank you so much for being there. It was a very hot day. Um, this is certainly a very successful event, a wonderful day. Um, we do think the heat probably kept some people away because it was it was pretty intense, um, but we had amazing volunteers and vendors and just everybody coming together to make it a really wonderful day. So if you were there, thank you so much. Um, we do have a survey out right now that closes this Friday, I believe. So if you wanna share some feedback for us or with us for the festival uh, about your experience, um, we're always trying to improve the event. And so we'd really love to hear from you um, about you know how, how your day at the festival was. So if you would like to complete that, you can do so from our website or our so social media pages. Um, and we'll, of course, pose reminders as well, but we'd love to hear from you all about that. Um, as Dan mentioned, lots of financial aspects of the festival. Um, there are certain, some things that are kind of still coming in as far as getting getting them finalized since the festival was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so once we have uh, all of that information, we'll have a better picture of, of what the event looked like for us for the year. But in general, um, certainly not bigger than last year because last year was our record setting festival. Um, but certainly one of our biggest events to date, and we hope that everyone had a really wonderful time. So um, anyone else have anything they'd like to share about the festival or, or bring up about the festival before we move on? Okay. All right. Moving on to the next I'll one. Like, oh, I'll say if you didn't volunteer last year and you would love to volunteer next year, sign up now before all the spots fill up. <laughs> We always need volunteers for the festival, always. So yes, um, if you're ever looking for an opportunity to get involved that maybe, you know, isn't a planning thing, maybe you want to just come and, and help us clean up for the day or um, man the silent auction booth, there's always a lot to do the day of the festival. I think this year we asked for 70 volunteers the day of. So, um, and if you were there, I'm sure you can understand why. So uh, always opportunities to get involved with that event, certainly. Hey, Jess, question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fun time at the festival. Just wondered how the revenue this year compared to years past. 
So that's what we won't know quite yet. We're still waiting for things to come in. Um, things with beer invoices take a little bit longer. Um, we typically have that information within two months of the festival ending uh, for all of the outgoing expenses versus incoming. Um, just at, at cursory review, um, again, last year was our true record setting. Um, but if I had to guess, just just from kind of doing this for the last 10 years, I would say this was our uh, second most successful festival ever. So don't hold me to that until we get those numbers finalized. But um, that's that's kind of what it looks like just from my perspective. That's great. All righty. So let's talk about the Info Center. Um, if you've been a member for a while, you're probably aware of the fact that we do have uh, what we call the Info Center down on 4th Street. It's kind of the Marion Village Association hub. Um, that space has been in use since I believe the late 80s. Um, the association was established, of course, in 1985. And uh, that's where the monthly meetings used to be held when they were in person. And we now host, uh, use the space primarily for the storage for all of our events and, and the many, many things we have for those events. Uh, but it's also a place where we host smaller events throughout the year. Uh, we do a pop-up there during the garden tour. Um, we do a uh, drives for donations of items for Goodwill following our spring and autumn yard sales. Um, we also have done things there in the past two years with Founders Day. So kind of use it for a variety of things. Um, but in addition to that, the Info Center is available for reservation as a, a small event space. So a meeting, baby showers, book clubs, whatever you're interested in. Um, if you're a member of the association, you can actually use the space completely free. You just need to reserve it through our online system um, and that space is yours to use. And if you are not a member, it is $15 an hour to reserve the space. So either way, very affordable. Um, we really love the space and we've been trying to make it better. Um, one of the things we're doing is adding Wi-Fi to the space to make it even more functional for folks. And then we're hoping to do some additional touch-ups to the, the info center, um, things that are cosmetic, weatherproofing, items like that. So with that all goes into saying that we are currently uh, hosting an online fundraiser for the info center. If that's something you'd be interested to contributing to or sharing, we'd love to have you share that for us. Um, we're going to be raising funds throughout the end I'm sorry, through to the end of the year, um, just to try to raise some additional money to make the Info Center an even more valuable asset to the community. So um, anyone who's interested in that, we have lots of information on our website about what type of amenities the Info Center offers, how you can reserve it. And we're still in the closed phase after the festival where we still have to get everything put away. Uh, but the Info Center will reopen for reservations here in just a couple of weeks. So if you're looking for a place to host an event, that is potentially an option for you. Anybody have any questions about the Info Center? David? Oh, you're still muted. Hey guys, um, we go. This, is our, this is our first meeting. Um, so I don't Welcome. know if we've asked questions before or after, but um, I wanted to ask if uh, for this event center, um, and you may have already said this, but is this something that you can hire like catering or can you bring your own food? Can you bring your own drinks? Like how does that work if you wanted to rent it out and, and how long can you rent it out for if you're a member? Absolutely. So um, as far as food goes, there are no kitchen facilities at the Info Center. This is a small space that can typically for like a meeting, um, like kind of a hosted meeting, you could host up to about 30 to 35 people max. And then a lot of times what we see are smaller parties like baby showers or children's birthday parties where we see anywhere between, you know, 15 to 25 people. Um, there is a small mini fridge on site that you're able to use during your reservation just to chill beverages. Um, but there is no kitchen sink. There is no microwave or stove. So yes, people do bring food in. You're welcome to bring in food. Um, people have also brought in alcohol for their events, depending on what type of event they are hosting. Um, there is a single bathroom. It's non-ADA compliant, but that's available as well. And the center also comes with the ability to use our folding tables and chairs um, for your event. So it's just kind of an open room space. There's also some photos available on our website so that you can kind of see what it looks like as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And Thank if you. we wanted to take a tour of that, did you say reach, reach out to you or... We don't typically have the ability. So since we're a volunteer organization, we're not like staffing the info center. Um, we certainly have pictures available. We don't typically um, just have the ability to give tours necessarily, but we do have the info center available during several events. So for example, um, the next event that we're hosting will be immediately following our yard sale on October 5th. So between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m., 
we'll have the info center open for people to come and bring goodwill uh, donations. So that's always a great time to see it as well as attending one of our existing events if you just kind of want to see the space in person. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Anyone else have any questions about the info center? Okay. All right, we will move on from there then. Thank you so much. All right here, let's talk about the flag presale. So back by popular demand, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here just so folks can see what I am talking about. Uh, we are doing another presale for the Marion Village flags. So last year we offered this full-size flag. This is a uh, three foot by five foot flag that you can hang outside. You can order it either with a pole pocket or with two grommets for uh, and, and fixing it to your home, whichever situation you have. Um, and that is available for pre-sale. We are taking pre-sale orders through the end of this month. So September 30th will be the last day to order. Uh, we are very excited that this year we have also added a garden flag. Um, so this is a, a garden flag, which is 12 by 18 inches. It does come with this iron mounting pole. So you get everything you need. Um, both sides of flags are for outdoor use. They are double-sided. And there's also uh, a piece of material in between to make sure that there's no bleed through. So really lovely flags. We're really happy to offer those. Um, again, these are pre-sale items only. So if you are interested in either item, you do want to make sure that you order them before the end of the year, because this is not something that we are able to just uh, keep in stock. They are made to order by our vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and just post the link really quickly here to our Square store. So if you are interested in one of those flags, please just go ahead and order them through our shop. And um, we will make sure that you get your flag when they come in. We're assuming they'll be in around mid-October, um, certainly by at the end of October at the latest, and then we'll we'll just be able to deliver them um, to anyone that is local to the neighborhood. So excited to have those back and kind of can't wait to walk through and see more flags waving in the neighborhood. All right, let's talk about board elections. So I'm gonna just pull up my little item right here. So first and foremost, every single year, the Marion Village Association has uh, board member elections. Those are voted on at the November meeting and candidates are announced at the October meeting. Um, so the positions of vice president, president, treasurer and secretary are two-year terms and the position of member at large is a one-year term. Um, and there's a rotation on, on how those are, are handled. So previously, president and vice president ran in the same year, and treasurer and secretary ran in the same year. Um, when we had some updates to our bylaws earlier this year in March, uh, folks did vote to kind of switch that up so that you didn't have a situation where president and vice president were running at the same time. Um, this is especially because if the president, for any reason, uh, were to leave their position, the vice president, of course, steps into that role, and we wanted to make sure that there um, is less of a chance that you have someone not running for the roles or no one to fill them. So. This year, uh, it is the, the normal election cycle for president. So president will be up uh, for a two-year term. Uh, vice president will be running for a partial one-year term. That's gonna bring the vice president kind of up to its normal cycle. Uh, so again, this year's vice president uh, from November would be running for a one-year term. And then let me verify, I don't wanna get those wrong walls running. Uh, Secretary and Treasurer are not up for election this year, but Member at Large is up for their normal one-year term. So we've got this all spelled out on our nomination form as well, if you kind of want to see more details and exactly what that language is. But if you're a member of the association and you live within the Marion Village boundaries, then you are eligible to run for office. So if you are interested in serving on the board in any of those roles, you can nominate yourself here through our nomination form, this does need to be completed prior to our October meeting because that is where candidates are announced. Uh, so that year, this would mean uh, prior to October 2nd, which is a Wednesday. So always happy to see new folks get involved who have maybe been thinking about it for a while. Um, and again, this year, there is an opportunity to run for president for two years, vice president for one year, or member at large for one year. And we will also take candidates uh, live during the October meeting. So if you're not quite sure, but you're able to attend that October meeting, you can also be nominated at that time. So hopefully we'll see some new folks uh, getting their names on the ballots and we'll have another election cycle at our November meeting.
Does anyone have any questions about the board elections? Okay, wonderful. We will move on. Let's see here. Uh, we don't have any updates for you this evening for beautification in terms of our committees. That is a dormant committee at this time. Um, but if anyone is interested in a beautification project and you might like to head something up, let us know. And we are always happy to support those efforts um, and see what type of project there might be in store. Uh, nothing new for membership. We did have uh, several new memberships come in at the festival, which we're always very happy to see. If you are a recent member, welcome. So happy to have you here. Um, we're really excited to have some new faces. And at the end of the meeting, when I open the floor, um, if you are new and you'd like to introduce yourself and say hello, we'll have some time for that as well. Uh, Mike is not with us this evening. So I don't have an update for folks on a social. I am not sure if we're doing a social happy hour this month or not. If we are, it will be announced on our social media pages. Um, if not, Mike will certainly talk about that at next month's meeting. And zoning. Tate, anything you want to say, share from the zoning side? Uh, just did you want to talk about the parking um, permit uh, plans? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, we can. So. German Village is going through a process right now to uh, request, I think it's German Village wide, uh, permit parking. Um, they're working with the city. There's already some permit parking in German Village, um, but it is not widespread. Admittedly, this is a pretty, pretty significant plan. Um, they do have a public meeting coming up and they have asked if folks from Marion Village would like to be involved in that discussion simply because we do share a lot of borders and uh, there is a thought that some of these um, permit parking changes, if they are approved, would certainly have effect on portions of Marion Village. Uh, Kate, do you happen to have the date handy for that public meeting? I'm so sorry, I don't have it with me. I'll pull it up one second. Thank you so much. Um, so I know that Tate will be attending that meeting. Tate is our zoning chair. Um, and then I believe at least one of our board members may be attending as well. Um, but again, it is a public meeting. So if you're interested in, in contributing to that conversation or just kind of learning more about it, um, they will be hosting that. And um, Tate will have the information as far as when that meeting is. But just wanted to let folks know that that conversation is happening. Um, and hopefully we'll have an update. Uh, okay, looks like it's October 23rd. Let's see here. Not exactly. I believe it's at their meeting house, but don't quote me on that just yet. I think that's correct, Jess. Okay. Uh, not exactly sure of the time, but the meeting house is accurate. So um, I will circle back to that if, if we have a time. We can also share that on our social media pages as well. Um, but again, German Village is publishing and it's at 6 p.m. Thank you, Zach. Um, so they'll be hosting that meeting on October 23rd at 6 p.m. at the German Village meeting house. Again, it is open to the public um, if you're interested in kind of participating in those conversations. It is a pretty widespread plan. It's it's There's definitely a lot to it. Um, so if that's something that interests you. We encourage you to show up. Tate, did you have something? Um, I, I can, it looks, it looks like we have a few new members, so I'll just kind of recap a little bit on the zoning process, um, if that's okay, Jess. But other than that, um, we, we should also have at least one zoning application for next month. So something to look forward to for that. Um, I will say uh, just for those new members, the city is is looking into redoing their the zoning code and it's a pretty extensive and comprehensive change that they're doing um, throughout. Uh, it's probably the first major change in a very long time that they're doing. And so they had public comment. Uh, I attended um, some of their, their open hours um, um, and town halls and things throughout the process. And they've focused, they've just voted uh, last month on the, uh, right before the council went to, on recess about the uh, corridors. And so now they're going to be focusing on the neighborhoods. Now, I don't have a time period of when that's going to be. I'm assuming in the next year or so that they're going to be focusing on that and potentially have some more changes that affects more of like our uh, or most people live here in the Marion, in Marion Village. So I will keep you guys all updated once I know more information about timing and public forums that I'm sure that, that the city will have as well. I encourage everyone to, to attend because they were really informative and really uh, did listen to uh, concerns and just comments from the public. So I'll keep you updated. I just want to give a quick update, Jess. Thanks.
thank you so much, Tay. And thank you for all your work with those meetings. It's a lot of information and we really appreciate having um, you kind of go and, and do the work on getting all that information for us. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Southside Area Commission update. Uh, we do not have an area commissioner with us this evening, so no updates to share from that side. But of course, if any are received, we will definitely pass those along to folks. I'll just kind of run through the upcoming local events. Uh, fitness in the park. So this is almost finished for the season. So if you are interested in doing yoga or other fitness in the park, um, Saturday mornings, that'll be through the end of September. So there are, what, I guess, four more dates. Um, and that starts at 9 a.m. at Moeller Park. Uh, these are um, classes that are hosted by yoga teachers and fitness teachers, um, they actually do so on a volunteer basis. So we just ask that if you can, that you make a donation directly to the instructor. Um, at the event, they typically have Venmo and Cash App and, and different opportunities um, to, to make a donation to them at the event. So um, nice and, and kind of good way to wake up on the weekends. Um, there is an opportunity toward the end of the month for kind of rain locations. Um, if if we actually have rain, unfortunately, on one of the days, uh, that will not be available again until the 21st, though. So if there happens to be rain on September 21st or 28th, um, those sessions do move to the info center so that they can still be held. Um, otherwise, if we have a rain location for the next two dates, uh, we'll certainly announce that on our pages the morning of the classes if we do, do determine we have to move uh, indoors somewhere. But great classes. We really love these every year. Um, so if you haven't had an opportunity to get out and check them out, uh, be sure to do so before the end of the month. The Southside Area Commission will have their next monthly meeting on Tuesday, September 24th. Those start at 6.30 p.m. and those are held at the Parsons Library. Um, so if you're looking for updates that are about the entire South Side and what's going on, um, you can get those at the Southside Area Commission monthly meetings. Our next monthly meeting is Wednesday, October 2nd. Again, this is when we will be announcing any uh, existing candidates for this year's elections and taking final candidates at that meeting. So be sure to attend for that to hear from our candidates uh, or let us know if you'd like to be one. We'll of course be here over Zoom again. So hope everyone can join us. Our autumn yard sale is coming up. That's going to be Saturday, October 5th, starts at 9 a.m. and goes through 3 p.m. throughout Marion Village. Um, everyone who is in Marion Village is welcome to register their home or business for the yard sale. If you are a member of the association, that is free. Um, and if you are not a member, it is just a $5 fee um, that helps us with all of the advertising that goes into that event. If you would like to register, the deadline is Thursday, September 26th, and after that date, we cannot make changes, so be sure to get your registration in uh, if you'd like to appear on that map. I will post a link here to our yard sale page on the website where you can get a link um, to the registration form. And as I also mentioned, we will be doing a drive with Goodwill. Uh, they partner with us on this immediately following the yard sale, so on Saturday, September 5th, from 3 to 5 p.m. If you have housewares or clothing that you'd like to donate, you can bring those down to the Info Center. Uh, that page I just linked will also have information on what they do and do not accept. Um, televisions, monitors, not accepted. Furniture is not accepted at this drive. Um, so please do make sure you check that before bringing items for donation. Uh, you can also bring e-waste items though, which is very exciting. Again, not televisions or monitors, but uh, Christmas lights that no longer work, old phones and tablets, printers, you name it. And Goodwill puts those to use and repurposes them. So this is a really good opportunity for a bit of fall cleaning, um, kind of a one-stop shop for your e-waste and donations. So bring your items on down and we'll take them. Uh, we cannot offer receipts for your donations because there will not be a Goodwill representative on site. Um, so if you do bring donations, uh, please do understand that unfortunately we cannot issue Goodwill uh, donation receipts on Goodwill's behalf. Let's see here. Uh, last but not least, the Marion Village Potluck. So in the month of December, we do not hold a monthly meeting typically unless there is like a zoning item that needs to be addressed within a timely manner. Uh, and instead we host a community potluck to bring everybody together for the end of the year and kind of see folks before all of the holidays and madness. Um, we do try to hold that very early in the month since there are a lot of other parties and events happening that time of year. Um, we have not yet finalized a date or a location, but stay tuned. We're definitely uh, hoping to get that announced very soon. Um, we typically try to target a Friday evening, 
Um, so we'd love to hear feedback from folks if that's, you know, not a good time for you. Typically, we've tried to do Saturday afternoons. I think we even tried a Sunday afternoon. And unfortunately, our turnouts for those have not been very positive. So um, always happy to hear from folks, though, about times that work best. And again, we hope to have a location and date to announce soon. All right, I'm gonna open the floor. Um, if anyone has questions, comments, concerns, something they'd like to share, or if you're new here, if this is your first time joining us for a meeting, we'd love you to introduce yourself, let us know a little bit about you, how you found us, um, and maybe why you're here, if you're interested in getting involved or anything you'd like to share. So open floor, feel free to jump in, folks. Hey guys, um, I'm Katie uh, and this is David. Hey Dave. Okay, and well. we just moved in a few months ago um, and oh, we're happy to be here. We attended our first Marion Village Fest, um, you know, a couple weeks ago and uh, we're coming from Old Town East. So not too far, um, but we're really loving the village and um, we live about 10 minutes from Schiller Park. So we are, love to, I work from home. So I'm loving that I get to walk that all the time because I used to be right by Topiary Park, if anybody knows where that is. Um, so my daily walks are like kind of the same. I just walked down to Schiller now instead of Topiary. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to, you know, we're, we're happy to be here and to get information and help possibly uh, volunteer and just know more about the community and get to know people. Um, and looking forward to meeting you all at the next in-person event. Fantastic. And Thank and you both so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Dave, just echoing what Katie said. Plus, um, you know, we we're just we were happy to see that we could join association together and get our feet planted and get our hands dirty and some volunteer work and see what <laughs> we can do to be part of helping the community here. Awesome. Well, there is always plenty to do. Uh, I cannot say enough. We've always got different opportunities, pretty much whatever you're interested in. I'm sure there's something. So you can always just shoot us an email if you want, volunteer at marionvillage.org. You can even fill out the volunteer form on the website if you're more comfortable with that, if you just kind of want to pick and choose what sounds good to you, but we are we actually always did to that. get more involved. You already did, man, you we did. are ahead of the game. I think, I don't think I filled out the form, but like when I, I know when I registered for the MVA, it was like, check, check the boxes yes. that you're interested Perfect. in. But then Perfect. I think I got, I saw a form later on at some point and I don't think I had a chance to fill in the form yet. Well, that's okay. If you check the boxes when you signed up, um, our, we're actually, our membership system that you used is kind of new. Um, so, so we're still getting the hang of it, but uh, our plan is that we'll reach out to folks maybe on a monthly basis who have kind of signed up new, see where those boxes have been ticked and just see if there's um, opportunities that you might like to jump into. Okay, awesome. Um, and do you guys also share like information and resources uh, for new homeowners? <laughs> you know, um, we don't have anything specifically, but I know we do have a lot of realtors in the area. We've in the past kind of had some guest speakers as well. Um, that might be something we try to kind of reinvigorate as the the new year comes in. But um, certainly if we have those resources, we we definitely will pass them along. Um, there are some really nice groups in addition to kind of, you know, what we do. There's some really nice groups online that that um, Facebook groups and next door groups and things like that, where people do tend to share a lot of information as well. So I highly recommend those. Um, and yeah, if we get any information, we will certainly be passing that out. Thank you. Well, thank and you. what are your guys' socials? Because you, I know you mentioned it a couple of times. I don't think yeah. I follow the MBA page if there's one. We do. Yes, we have lots of, uh, so we are primarily active on Facebook and Instagram. Those are our social media pages where we post everything and, and keep okay. everybody in the loop. Um, if you just visit us at marionvillage.org, you can actually get links to all of our active social media pages as well. Um, and then of course, as members, you'll receive uh, kind of a, a monthly email, just reminding you to come to meetings. And then you'll also be subscribed to our blog where we, you know, if we post something that something coming is coming up, you'll get those notifications as well. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And thanks again. And thanks for introducing yourselves. Well, anyone else care to jump in and say hello? Hey, Jess, I was going to jump in. I, yes, um, please. You know, I, I think I've met most of you, but uh, my name is Jeremy. I am uh, David's neighbor. Um, moved into to Marion Village uh, last October, so close to a year. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do is just understand I, I, most of us are, are probably aware that Long John Silver's location is in the news uh, recently. They finally tore down what was probably the biggest eyesore 
in the neighborhood. So we were excited about that. Um, some of us weren't as excited about what is apparently going to be planned to take its place. I guess it's going to be an oil change center, which isn't the worst thing in the world uh, by comparison. Uh, but I, you know, it got me thinking that I, I was just wondering, uh, has there been any conversation in the past about what the high street corridor within Marion Village might look like? Anything in the way of a master plan, uh, anything that would incorporate potentially the riverfront? Um, what, what kind of conversations have there been and what kind of conversations could there be to be more proactive about what takes place, especially in context of some of the zoning changes that are that they've already been improved or will be. So there's no plan specific to Marion Village. I know that there are some different plans that have been proposed at the city level um, for certain parts of, of the city. Um, I know the South Side has been discussed in some of those plans. Um, Tate, jump in if, if there's something I'm not aware of or forgetting. I think part of the zoning changes are going to impact future plans. So some of those might be on hold as far as kind of corridor planning and, and things like that, that you might see in other areas like the short north. Um, but there are certainly a lot of potential developments happening in the area. And I think that those discussions are definitely happening. Tate, have you heard uh, much about like corridor development plans at all at, at any of the meetings you've attended? I have, yeah. I, I won't go to uh, much detail because it's been a while and I don't want to mess anything up, but that was the major, some of the major changes that they passed just last month. And so um, a lot of the changes that they wanted to make is so that there will be less variances that probably go through um, organizations like ours. Uh, and so it should make it so easier to develop is, is the goal. And so I, I do recommend if you go to zonein.com, and I can probably pull that up, um, mm -hmm. but Columbus Zone In, if you just Google it, you should be able to find it. They um, show a map of the corridors and you can see that corridor that you just were talking about. And I apologize, I'm Googling while yeah. I, I talk here. Um, so so I'm definitely familiar with, um, I, I, I believe it's zoned urban center or urban core, which as far as I can tell, the only thing that means to me is that they're going to allow um, up to five stories on the high street. But I, I'm thinking more about how do we get to the point where we we actually get a voice in you know determining what we attract to that corridor a, as sure. a community. Do so we get a voice in you know what a more walkable, uh, commuter friendly high street might look like? Traffic calming, these sorts of things. Is there a forum for that? Does it exist? If so, I'm looking for something to, to latch onto because I've got some energy around this and I, I just, you know, I can go, you know, swing wild. I'm, I'm a little naive when it comes to commercial real estate, to be honest with you, but I, I'm ready to make some calls and figure out, you know, who makes things happen around here. And I, I just really wanted some context and, and background. If there have been conversations, I'd like to latch onto those. If there haven't, maybe I'll start. Yeah. So, um, and just feel free to jump in here, but like w one of the things I would recommend, so one is staying involved here uh, because we uh, actually heard uh, the variance on that, that very uh, lot. And so we voted on the take five. Um, that's something that I, I would definitely recommend you um, just being involved here. If, if you want to be more involved in the zoning committee, I, I, I can certainly, um, help you with that and i can even drop my email in here and, and jeremy we can we can stay in contact um i'll also say city council you ask you know where the action is going to be or, or who makes these decisions city council is the one who makes those decisions so i definitely recommend probably even starting with it depends on who you live but like my council member is uh shayla favor uh and probably starting with their office and their aides i can reach i can um give you their contact information if you like and even help you look up what district you're in now we do vote for all of them so they all represent you uh, but with the new district system that council does um there there are council members that are specific for our district now um jess am i missing anything is there any other forms that we can share you are admittedly far uh, better informed about this area than i am um, okay. 
which I very much appreciate, by the way. Um, but no, I, I agree with everything you said. And yes, we did actually, it's been, I think it's been over a year. Um, it has been. That yeah. proposal for the 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 oil change that that did come through us because our boundaries are a little weird, but that corner right there, that is, that is still Marion village. Um, so we did get asked to kind of review that entire process. I did not even think at this point it was still going forward. Um, but then of course the demolition happened recently and it appears that it is. Um, so I will say that one of the beliefs that most people have about kind of the the massive zoning changes that are happening at the city of Columbus. Um, some folks do believe, and this has not been confirmed in any way, um, but some people do believe that it is possible that kind of this role that we serve with zoning variances in neighborhoods and, and this kind of review level and recommendation process may be removed um, when, when that happens. So I don't know if that's been decided, but certainly um, if that's something that, you know, you're interested in discussing, um, participating in those meetings that Tate has mentioned are, is definitely a, a very positive way to get involved with that. Um, and then there, it looks like Tate and Zach both shared some links um, in chat for other information um, about those corridors. So all of that is kind of to say that, yes, staying involved is probably the best way um, to hear it first when we have information to share. And Jess, I'll just say too, that German village thing that was brought up earlier, um, Jeremy, they're talking about changing High Street and Third and trying to add, um, I know David mentioned the same thing in our little group, our board member text, but like traffic calming, medians, flower stuff in the middle to try to get, as David said, High Street to not be a concrete hellscape of people going 80 miles an hour. So. Yes, it so sounds arts. like that might be a good meeting for you to attend, um, Jeremy, because they they it is more than just permit parking, um, kind of what they're mm -hmm. what they're discussing. So um, that might actually help to kind of cover some of those corridor questions, at least for for our little strip here. So and, that's that same uh, meeting that we were talking about earlier. Parks. Yes, that's the German Village uh, parking permit parking meeting on I believe it was October twenty sixth. Maybe I will. And, and I will say, uh, believe it or not, the city is very eager um, to, to get comments like this. Uh, they, they, they wanted people to attend these meetings. They, they wanted people to yell at them a little bit uh, about some of the issues that they have. So uh, feel free to, to do that. And like I said, I, I dropped my, my zoning email. Um, Jeremy, I'd, I'd love to, we can chat some more um, offline. Just feel free to send me an email. Uh, we can go from there. Uh, and like I said, I can also feel free to give you some emails and some contacts from some of the staff uh, from our council members. Let's let's do that. And if you don't mind, just uh, one more. I'll be brief uh, and then uh, turn the floor back over. Um, but uh, I think a, a couple folks have mentioned a um, couple folks, more than a, a few have mentioned bringing um, some kind of a, uh, a grocer uh, into the neighborhood grocery store. Have there been any discussions along those lines that anybody's aware of? Just the desire that folks have, but we we haven't heard from Just anyone okay. that represents a grocer um, or represents a, a group that would kind of bring one into the neighborhood. Um, and that was yeah, that was my, losing giant eagles. So a group that might bring one into the neighborhood. Does anybody dealt with or otherwise have contacts with a developer like a Casto, uh, who I know has been pretty active on the south side. There have been any discussions that we're aware of? No. Okay. The the only one I know, I don't know if you're this is what you're talking about, Jeremy, but um where the it just all this area of Rana closed, the um the Papa John's that strip, that's went over to I think uh oh, Devin works for them, but um Rasili, and it's been proposed to turn that into a, I think a four story mixed use developments of that whole lot there. But Rosili, I guess, already has the plans for that and is trying to get it approved by the city. At Papa John's? Is that is that on Parsons? On Parsons, sorry. On Parsons, okay. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um north of Whittier, if I'm remembering correctly. And then we, we are gonna have the uh the bike path is a is a is a done deal, right? The bike path that they're gonna build uh between here and Great Southern. Or is that still up in the air? No, we I had a call about that a year or so ago, Jess. I believe it's. Been, I think it's that was been a, quite a while. 
Yeah, and that was talk of the Fort expansion, time. and the Fort expansion hasn't started, but it was still approved as of that call a year and some change ago. That does happen a lot. We we see things come through, especially for larger proposals. Um, they might come through, and and then nothing happens for a couple of years. So not uncommon. Um, but it is always nice when some developers have actually reached out proactively and shared kind of updates with us um, as things have changed. So anytime that happens, we will certainly either have them come and speak at a meeting um, or just pass those along during one of our monthly meetings. Well, hey, thanks. Appreciate it, guys. I see Zach sent a bunch of links over for me to look at. Appreciate that, Zach. Uh, thanks for entertaining the conversation. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thanks, Jeremy, for starting some good conversations. Anyone else care to jump in or just say hello before we adjourn this evening or have anything to share? Okay. Well, in that case, again, thank you all so much for being here tonight. Fantastic meeting, uh, wonderful festival. We really cannot thank you all enough. Um, be on the lookout. Again, we've got our, our yard sale here in just another month. Um, we'll have the potluck to look forward to. And then uh, we've got our elections in November. So really excited about kind of seeing the year somehow already kind of come to a close here soon. Um, but really happy to have folks joining us tonight and uh, hope to see you all again next month. So. Everyone have a fantastic evening and we'll see you soon. Night folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.